Hey, what's up guys? Joe Rock here with the 79th Xamarin Android tutorial. Uh, in this video and the next ones, we're going to be talking about the design library. And uh, for those of you that have, may have not heard of the design library, let me bring up the information right here. So it was released uh, quite some time ago, going about nine, ten months ago, that it was released. And the, the, the reason why the design library was released was a lot due to the release of Lollipop and material design because of it. So when Material Design came out, we we you know we loved it. It was this great new way to to create apps visually uh, engaging. I mean, there was all these 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 rules that we had to follow, but I mean, they were really well worth it because it really was just a well thought out way to uh, uh, it was a UI kind of language, and we and with it came you know widgets and and, and things that called like snack bars. We were like, what's what what is that? You know, I mean, these um, fluid you know animations and it was just like well, what's going on with that and we really didn't have anything to to adhere to these rules so we kind of had to make up our own widgets our own things to to get it to where it was material design it was mit, mit, um, our app was and finally uh, Google answered our our call and basically said okay we're gonna make the design library so the design support library which is a support library um, it, uh, what it does is it lifts, does a lot of the heavy lifting for us to make our app material design friendly. So with it becomes a navigation view. I mean, if you guys read up, I, mean, I, I strongly recommend to read up on this, um, but I am gonna do my best to go about um, and highlight with this app all of the great um, features of the design library. And just kind of quickly scroll over it, you'll see things called floating labels. We'll go over that, uh, snack bar, I mentioned that we're, we'll see how to implement a snack bar tabs you saw in the in the app that um, we have tabs now and it's, it's, it's using that the tab layout and there's collapsible tab layout uh, there's a there is um, a thing something called a coordinator layout which does a lot of the heavy lifting for us we're going to go over that and what it's for how to use it we'll talk about a collapsing toolbar because we will implement one and there's actually a few other things that they've updated with. Um, one of them is bottom sheets, and we're going to go ahead and, and use one of those as well. And that's, that came with update 23. Um, and we're going to go ahead and since we have that now, we're going to go ahead and implement a bottom sheet with this app. So uh, if you guys might be familiar, if you have looked at the design library, there is a great app called Cheese Square that really highlights a lot of the stuff that design library does for us and um, check it out I strongly recommend it and it is a lot like this one I did base a lot of the things off of that cheese square one uh, cheese square app and now what I'm doing is taking it and um, adding some more stuff to it that I think is um, needs to kind of be explicitly said some things that were that that weren't in the cheese square app I'm adding some things that weren't in it just because it hadn't had that update yet like one example is bottom sheets I'm, I've added bottom sheets to it so um, and now it's of course this is that was Android this is put over into Xamarin um, so it's going to be really hopefully uh, really simple for you guys to go ahead and get this uh, app up and running with it and the next few videos are going to show you how to do that so let's go ahead and go uh, what I want to do is want to go over the app and, and talk about uh, what it's doing and, and that way we kind of get a high level view and then we're going to jump in and start from scratch and we're going to build this this guy from scratch and um, hopefully you know at this point in time after you're done you can kind of really have a good grasp on design library okay so as you can see the um, right away you see you see fragments which are just tabs and um, the reason why I meant them fragments because I wanted to be explicit that they are fragments each fragment has its own layout of course as you can see and it's all wrapped into one single activity all right so this is the tab layout and I'm using and um, it does have different fragments and let's talk about the first one, the first tab. Uh, what we're using is a recycler view. Of course, we have gone over it before and uh, we're gonna make one again as well. Notice that when I scroll, the, uh, the thing you might notice first is that the toolbar suddenly collapses along with my scrolling and then as soon as I start to pull up, no matter where I'm at, it will begin to come back up. And we'll see how we can set different flags on this toolbar and we can change the behavior of it, how we scroll. So there's different flags that we can use that change the behavior. Right now I have it on a particular flag that it, that has it to where it collapses as soon as you start scrolling down. And no matter where I'm at, as soon as I start scrolling back up, it will reappear. 
Now, the next thing I want to show you is the snack bar. So the snack bar is something that's really cool. It gives it gives a visual, quick visual feedback. It's really used. Uh, it's really it's used greatly. And a good example is an undo. Um, whenever you, a user deletes something, an undo is given to them, and they are able to have an action which you can tie to a method to undo whatever they did. And that's one example. I'm not using that example, but that's a that's a really common use case for it. So uh, if we go into the second tab, we will see that we are using the nice edit text that basically uses a, um, a floating text hint. And what it, as you can see before, what you do is when you um, click on this, usually it goes away, but now it's actually going to float up to the top and allow me to type in my username in this case. And it, what it does is it gives me constant visual feedback and I can see that I can, I'll never forget what I'm typing in and what what this field is for and that's really nice so um, you may have, you know if you're a user you click on it you're like oh I forgot what the hint said but now it's giving you some feedback always and um, it just keeps the user more engaged it also comes with a nice air text uh, message so that is put into it um, that's really simple to implement and we're gonna go ahead and implement that the next thing I want to show you guys is just another fragment. So it's, <laughs> there's nothing really too fancy going on here, but um, I did get a lot of questions about the how to put different layouts inside of each fragment. So um, this really is really really shows off how to do that. And um, it was in the tutorials 10, 11, 12, I believe that was. And I'm getting a lot of questions on how to, you know, um, it's very fundamental. Fragments are very fundamental to Android, and the because they are, you want to know be able you want to be able to have each layout if to belong to its own fragment and then put a whole bunch of fragments in an activity to host it so that's very fundamental to android now and um, i just added another fragment so that i can kind of really explicitly show that even more uh, the next thing i want to sh see uh, show you guys is the navigation view and what's unique about this navigation view that, that the design library is doing for us is this is all built off a of menu layout and when I say menu layout, I mean a menu layout that like a lot, if you guys are familiar with building menus for the action bar, you can now build a menu for the navigation view using that. So that's super cool. You can even give it, um, which I did here, you give it a, another uh, separate layout and you can attach that to the header of the navigation view. And we're gonna go through that as well. So a lot of the heavy lifting is being done for us. Super awesome guys, uh, really excited here. So uh, the next thing, uh, which I already did in, in uh, a few minutes ago, was I clicked on here, and uh, what's really cool about this is this is what uh, is gonna give you, give us an example of using the collapsible toolbar. And what I mean by that is this. So it gives us that parallax kind of uh, look, and I really like this, guys, because it's like very, very common use case to be able to click on something, and then you wanna show a bigger picture of it, or you wanna show more detail about it visually, and then, um, then you wanna give some text input and it's really cool that nice transition of being able to really show that off and then as a user reads more about it they're giving more real estate space to kind of keep doing what they want to do uh, very very cool like that a lot so we're going to learn how to implement that and the last uh, thing i want to show is after you click on this the action of the snack bar it's going to come into here and this is just a this is this is just a picture it's not actually maps we're not going to go over maps so if you click on it, it doesn't do anything um whoops uh so but what this what this activity shows is the bottom sheet, and this is a bottom sheet that is now a part of Design Library that does a lot of the lifting for us to make a bottom sheet. And um, a bottom sheet, I guess you could say, would be used when you um, when you want to show further stuff and not kind of interrupt the user by taking them to another activity, taking them open up a new fragment. You sort of want to show them quickly and keep them engaged in whatever they're doing, but you want to show them more information at the same time. And when uh, screen real estate is limited, like in a mobile app, this is perfect. And um, a use, good use case and why I put a map in the first place is if a user clicks on something, then a bottom sheet comes up and tells them more about that. And if they want to, they can continue doing what they're doing. But if they want to see more information about it, like their hours or their you know uh, uh, location or whatnot, they can scroll up and they can see some more information and then have it go away completely if they want. They don't care about it anymore. And um, another thing to notice is that this, notice how the bottom sheet is and the uh, floating action button are in are are in harmony. So they never actually, it never really intrudes on its state, on its on its 
location, it simply just moves with it. And that's actually purposely done. And that's through layout behavior, which we're going to go over. Layout behavior is another thing that we want to talk about with the design library. So um, as you can see, guys, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I, if you read up on a design library, it's definitely not touching all aspects. I mean, you can go hours and hours on this, of course, but I really wanted to show you guys a really well-rounded app that really gives a good example of the design library and really talks about how um, and shows how to use it and really to get you guys up and running and kind of really highlights all the all the good stuff and get you guys in a good spot to start using it if you have not yet all right so um so for the duration of this video what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of start a fresh new application and get our dependencies in when i say dependencies i mean our support libraries and a few other things as well that way we have a good clean um project that has all our dependencies ready and then we'll start coding okay so let's get that started guys all right so as always let's go ahead and start with a fresh new project and uh i do want to mention this is the first video after the announcement that xamarin has now became free uh and i did make a video that shows uh basically how to get you know uh start to how to start using xamarin for free and not just regards of updating your id your visual studio with the latest update, which is update two right now, and um, also updating the Xamarin SDK to start, you know, to where that'll get rid of the trial screen if you were using the trial version. Now it'll no longer be there. So to start utilizing Xamarin for free, do do be sure to watch the previous uh, or the, the the video about uh, Xamarin and, and how to update and it being free, and I'll go ahead and show you that. So just make sure you're on the latest uh, update of Visual Studio and the SDK until we start so here we go guys so let's go ahead and do a blank app android and we will call it design library tutorial and uh like i said this video like i said we we, we talked about the design library we have an app that we're going to be uh, working towards to build that'll show off a lot of the highlights of the design library so what we're going to do first is just going to get go ahead and get a component and you guessed it we're going to get the design library component so if we go ahead and click here add to app and this is going to uh this also has quite a bit of dependencies on it so they will get this and not only will it get this but it will also get uh the other dependencies for it and notice that oh well let me point this out so if you get the component right here um it's going to be 23111 but a lot of times what i'll do is i'll just go straight to nougat and i will look for a version and it's actually going to give us the latest version that's actually on nougat nougat seems to get updated uh quickly faster i'm not sure why but notice that if you come here if we look at um we type in Xamarin, that'd be a better keyword. We'll find Xamarin support design. And this will list the dependencies on it, which is uh, app compat, recycler view, and of course the basically the core library support v4 of the support library. And notice that it's 23.2.1. So this is the a later version. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and grab that guys. Let's if I click install, you look down at your output window. It's going to ask also to install these other dependencies which hit okay and uh for the most part it takes care of a lot of the dependencies for you. you 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 do you click on the design library you support or you install it and then um it just goes out and grabs all the dependencies for that library so very convenient and if we look here at the bottom it'll tell us that it's finished if we want to make sure we can come over here to the references notice our new references are now all these other dll's that we have right here all right, guys, so um, we're also going to want to get one more reference, and that's going to be, if we go here, if we do, uh, let's see, a good keyword, circle image. This is going to be the one we want. So this is going to be for Xamarin Android. 
Um, it just gives us a way to, to create circular images through XML. So it's just gonna basically uh, inherit from image view, the Android image view. And it's a way to get circle image views that, that you saw in, in the app. So that's gonna give us that right there. So we're also gonna need that library. So let's, let's go ahead and install that. and looks like it installed correctly and uh there, there might be some other stuff that we run into guys but for the most part that's gonna add that's gonna basically be a lot of our references uh we still have a blink app of course but now we have all of our proper references that we're gonna need i like to get these kind of like going ahead uh first and then after that we'll, we'll kind of start actually coding um so basically for this video you know i just want to go over what to expect for this project uh if you are interested in learning the design library, we're gonna do so in the next few videos and we're gonna be building towards the sample app that I showed you earlier. All right, thanks for watching guys.